Hey guys, it's Virtual here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how the physics and atmospheric flight works into a universe, and then also the elements you're going to need to make that happen. So the video is going to be packed full of tips and tricks and um, different things that you want to know to make your ships more efficient. Now if you want to see how to make your ships pretty, I have videos on that also. Just go to my channel and check that out. Now, there hasn't been a video that I've made in a while due to the status of the Dual Universe servers. As you might know, they haven't been doing so great. So I haven't been able to make a video that, you know, would be not painful to watch. However, they are slowly improving, and today I feel comfortable making a video on atmospheric flight. I'd also like to announce the winner of the beta key giveaway, which is Carter on Discord. So he will have beta for... so he'll have beta for free. For the extent of beta, now I have five more beta keys to give away, so just stay tuned, watch the videos, and I'll be announcing those giveaways as time goes on. Anyway, let's get right into it. I think the first thing I'd like to talk about is elements just on the ship in general. Now my, el my ship also has the space elements, and I'll be going over those briefly as well. Now one of the first things you're going to need is a way to get the ship just kind of popping off the ground, right? And um, that's going to be accomplished with either the vertical booster or the hover engine. What I have on the bottom of my ship are vertical boosters. They take space fuel, and they work in and out of the atmosphere. So if you want to go land on the moon, you can do that with the vertical boosters. They also have a higher hover height. Now, the hover engine runs off of atmospheric fuel. It has a slightly lower height. Now don't go flying to the moon with just hover engines because you're going to be disappointed when you come in for a landing. Anyway, these things are critical for a ship. You can actually run a combination of both to kind of get the best of both worlds, but I decided against it on this ship and I went just with the hover engines. Now while we're talking about the elements, I'd like to go over the different sizes elements have. So as you can see on the bottom of my ship are large hover engines. Now most elements come in variations of four, so we have the extra small, the small, the medium, and the large hover engine. However, many elements come in variations of just a small, small to large, so like, like I said, this one's large. So these um, brakes, for example, they come and uh, you'll be able to get a small brake, a medium brake, and then a large brake. So there's only three variations. And then we have um, items with five variations, like the space engine. So we have um, extra large space engine all the way down to extra small space engine. Now, if you'd like to see um, the different elements the game has for you, you can actually click J, which is to open the market, and you can go through and look at different things. Now, I already pulled up the engines here, so you can kind of see what the extra large engines look like. Now, while we're on the screen, I'll go ahead and talk about the different variations of engines that we have. There's actually a lot of different variations, and it can be quite confusing at times. You're going to mostly want to stick with the regular variation because it's much cheaper. All of these other variations require some amount of tier 2 resources. Now these have certain stat gains and stat decreases. So we have items with a higher fuel consumption but also a higher thrust or maybe a lower thrust and a lower warm up time. Warm up time also increases with the size of the element. So a large engine is going to take much longer to warm up than an extra small engine. I'll go into how talents affect that just a bit later. Um, I already mentioned some things about the brakes. It's very simple. The space brakes work in space, they slow you down. The atmospheric brakes slow you down in the atmosphere. Now these elements have arrows that come off of them, but for the brakes, the arrows don't actually matter. You can block these however much you want, and it won't make your ship unflyable. Now other elements like the stabilizer, you'll want to have those arrows completely exposed or else the stabilizer will become blocked, and you'll be able to see that in the build helper. Um, moving on, we'll just go straight over to the stabilizers. These basically generate lift, and then they also give a little bit of torque to the ship. And we'll talk about torque later in the video, and I'll be able to show you hopefully a good demonstration on kind of how that works. Now there's three different types of airfoils in the game. We have the medium, or well the medium, I mean obviously there's a bunch of different sizes, but we have the stabilizer, the aileron, and then the regular wing. Now they all have different purposes. So the stabilizer creates, you know, a median amount of lift, but it has a very high stall angle. The aileron creates a ton of lift, but it has a low stall angle, and the wing is right in between. So if you wanted to build a big ore hauler, you would want to use the stabilizer. 
because it has a lower stall or yeah well it won't stall as readily right so you'll be able to go up into the atmosphere at a steep angle of attack and you won't fall back down an angle of attack I'll go ahead and talk about that if you don't know already it's like if you're flying like this but like like that right now with an aileron and you're carrying a ton of ore you would just stall and then fall back to the planet but the stabilizers really help keep you up if you know anything about physics you could go ahead and break up the vectors of the thrust on the engines and figure out how much thrust actually goes towards your vertical velocity that can be done in this game but we won't get into that because I do math all day and doing it for YouTube isn't something I, I want to do. So we've talked about that. Um, you can also open up your inventory and you can check out the different stats on the elements. For example, hit points, the maximum lift, the stall angle, and uh, other different items like that which uh, are pertinent to your design. Now we'll move on to adjusters. They are these little things that go on the side. They also have variations extra small to large and the placement of the adjusters greatly matters. Now the center of mass of my ship is right here in the middle. How So I put my adjusters all the way out at the end. As you might have learned in physics class, torque is the force at a length. So the longer the length, the higher the torque. So if I put my adjuster really close to the center of the ship, then I would have a very low torque and the ship would not be maneuverable. However, moving the adjuster very far out here on the ends of the wing gives me a lot of torque which allows the ship to really flip around. Torque can also be applied by the stabilizers and ailerons and airfoils in general, like I mentioned, and the same goes for them. The farther out from the center of mass of the ship, the greater the spin. Now, I do have a bit of a downside with this ship and it is that I don't really have a very good um, pitch and yaw because the ship is so flat so it has great roll but not great pitch and yaw um, if you have a ship with a similar problem just add more adjusters I decided not to because I kind of like the slow feel we uh, kind of covered the engines already we covered the different types like the freight engine the military engine and so on and so forth as you can see on the back I have six atmospheric engines and two space engines a pretty good rule you want to have for a ship that goes to space is for every two atmospheric engine you want one space engine now speaking of the engines also don't quote me on this but I think it's correct each size is eight times more thrust than the size before it so if I had a medium engine I well I would need eight medium engines to accumulate one large engine I, th I think that's how the scaling works like I said don't quote me on that you can actually see it in your um, inventory anyway just exactly what the what the newtons of force are now obviously you know you need a flight seat if you want to fly a ship flight seat should just go in the front and then also I went through in the building tutorial things like uh, auto configuring your flight seat important things like that now we also have fuel tanks and uh, there's also three different types of fuel tanks as well as three different types of engines I'm not going to cover them a lot but there's a rocket engine and a rocket fuel tank they can be turned on and off but the fuel drains really fast and the thrust is really high so if you're in a really sticky situation you can use these to get yourself out of the atmosphere however it's not recommended the uh, two most common fuel tanks are just going to be the space fuel tank and then the uh, the atmo fuel tank one notable thing that Nova Quark should fix is that there is no extra small space fuel tank there's only a small which is substantially larger than the extra small NQ please fix. It, it's annoying. People that have played DU know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I also went through in the building tutorial already how to link these up to your engines properly uh, to get good fuel distribution. Now that I've talked about that I'd also like to talk about one more thing pertaining to the engines and the ailerons and that is the talents that affect them. So if I open F F2 I can go over, actually I'm here already in my um, piloting skill tree here so as you can see like if I open up my atmospheric engine pilot this is probably the most important you can see different stats like the warm-up optimization minus 10 percent T50 T50 is the time to 50 percent thrust so minus 10 percent just makes it faster on the warm-up fuel efficiency that's self-explanatory this one just gives you more thrust and the altitude efficiency probably the most important atmospheric talent makes your engines 
more effective at higher altitudes. As you might have noticed, the engines start reducing in thrust as you go higher. Now there's also skills for all of these different things, and then also we have a technician skill with a pilot skill. Now the pilot skill affects the ship that you're flying, and the technician skill affects a ship that you build. Now if I have atmospheric element handling, and I place down a engine, then that engine always has 2% more thrust. I mean, depending on my skill, it can go all the way up to that. But So it has 2% more thrust. So I could sell my ship, and I could uh, be like, oh, here's a ship, and it has, you know, it has 6% extra thrust on the engines for you, and you can, and people will pay extra for that, for example. And then also, if you're in an organization, you can go around and replace people's engines. I'm not going to do it now because, well, it's a little bit buggy, as you might expect, but you can just um, alt-click to delete the engine and then backspace to put it back, and that goes ahead and applies the talents. Furthermore, there's also the space engine variation, vertical boosters, and all the other things. Um, I'll leave that as an exercise to you. You can go through and check all of those things out if you would like. But uh, they're definitely important if you want a really effective ship. So I guess we'll get right into flying. I think the, uh, the first thing in flying I'd like to talk about is a more detailed example on the torque that is applied to the ship. Now there's also a few tips and tricks that come with this. Now I'm going to go ahead and click X twice, and that's going to display the forces and trajectory. Now the big green line is my trajectory. If I stop the ship, it goes away. Now you can see these red lines are the forces coming off of my vertical boosters. So as you can see, if I modulate my spacebar, I can create the force or not. Now maybe you want to increase the height that your ship hovers at. You can hold Alt and hold Space and the altitude that your ship hovers at goes up. This is more useful for the vertical boosters, but still, it's good to know. C, holding Alt and then clicking C does the exact same thing. So hopefully that can be of, uh, of some use to you. Now also you might be seeing just a little bit, if I click my roll keys, you can see there are huge lines that come off my adjusters, and these are the torque that is applied to the ship. Now as you can see, even though I just have one adjuster, on the ends of the wing, my roll authority is pretty good. You can also adjust, I'm not going to go quite this far in detail, a little bit of your um, authority and the effectiveness of the adjusters and the Lua parameters of your seat. It's under the advanced tab. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get flying and we're going to see these adjusters in action. As you can see, my engines are warming up and you can see as the force vector gets a little bit higher as I keep going. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my HUD so you can see the ship a bit better. Now that I'm flying, you can see that the wings are generating, while shaky, a force to some extent. And that force is what holds my ship up. Now you might notice the canards on the end of the wing aren't doing anything, and that's because they are there to keep my ship in line. Now if I didn't have those and I turned my ship sideways, if I yawed it over to the side, then the ship would just continue on its current trajectory. However, if I start turning my ship, you can see that a huge red line comes off that stabilizer, and that big force is acting to move my green trajectory in the direction that I want my ship to go. It's slow, but you can see that working. Now unfortunately I can't demonstrate stall angle because the stall angle is just so high and I might end up crashing, so we're not going to do that. But you get the point on the, on the stabilizers. You should always have some extent a vertical stabilizer and then also your lifting horizontal stabilizers. Once again you can convert your vector into components if you wanted to know how much of that big red line coming off the right stabilizer was going to your lift and then how much was going to turn the ship. You know that's for the professional ship designer which I am not. Now I'd also like to talk about max velocity. Let me turn my hood back on. Your maximum velocity is dependent on three things, and that is the thrust of your engine, the density of the atmosphere, and the cross-section of your ship. Now, I didn't talk about cross-sections a lot, but they are in the build helper, and I'll come back down and land and show you how those work. Now, if I look at the front of my ship, I have a relatively small cross-section. If I took a screenshot of my ship and counted the pixels, I would get at least some factor of, a, of an area of the ship. However, if I look at my vertical cross-section, you can see that it's much higher. 
so the frontal cross section should be thin if you want your ship to be efficient. Now my ship is aerodynamically limited, which means it has more thrust than it needs at a low altitude. So my max speed occurs at 50% thrust. That's how you know if it's aerodynamically limited. Your drag coefficient is based mainly on cross section, but also on the elements you use, like the stabilizers, that have a little bit higher drag, as you might expect. Furthermore, the uh, I think they can still be done, but um, the uh, the flap on the stabilizers can be adjusted via Lua, and then also you can adjust the lifting factor by holding space or C. Let me turn on my trajectory. You can see if I hold space, the trajectory snaps up, and if I hold C, it goes down. There's also a yaw trim using the left and the right arrow key on the keyboard. I should have brought some water. I'm talking a lot. Anyway, I think we'll go ahead and land the ship. And as I'm doing that, I'd like to talk about one more thing, and that is how a ship burns. So at a certain speed, your ship's going to start burning, and that burning speed is dependent on, once again, the cross-section of your ship and the velocity. And then also, the uh, well, the, the speed at which it burns is dependent on the cross-section and the density of the atmosphere, sorry. So if you have a higher cross-section, your ship's going to burn more easily. If you have a lower cross-section, your ship will slip through the atmosphere in a more effective, sleek, and uh, not burning manner. Now, the trajectory or the cross-section of a ship is calculated as if the camera was on the trajectory. So now if I put my camera right on the trajectory and then I pull up violently, you can see, oh, now my cross-section's doubled. And as I'm sure you can imagine, if I was flying a thousand kilometers per hour and I did that, the ship would just immediately explode. So that's something to be aware of. If you're going to build a fast ship, keep that in mind. Either tune down your control accordingly, or make it so that the ship does not burn up and the cross-section is reasonable. As you can see on mine, the cross-section <laughs> is not reasonable. That's a common mistake that happens when you're entering the atmosphere. Like, oh, I've tested my ship at 1500 kilometers per hour. But you didn't test it coming in belly first, did you? So that's, uh, that's one of the common causes of a burning ship and something you should know. So a higher cross-section equals a lower burning speed, which means turning can cause your ship to burn. Just keep that in mind. Now one last thing I'd like to do before ending this video is go through the build helper, and for that I need to go into build mode. Tipping up as you land is called a flare. It makes your landing a little bit softer. Alright, so there are a few useful statistics in the build helper. I go into build mode, click tab, and then I can use the helper up here. Here we have the mass, the honeycomb, the elements, things like that. I'll let you go through that. Fuel, and then these two here are the probably the most important ones. Atmospheric flight engineer, I've already expanded out for you. Here we have the max thrust of the ship, which is 4.03 Gs. That is dependent on the engine on the ship um, in the forward direction, and then for the up direction is the thrust that your wings produce to hold you up against the gravity. So 3.55 Gs indicates that on Alioth I could put about 3.55 my ship's mass into the cargo hold and it would still hold itself up. Brake force in meters per second squared indicates how fast your ship slows down. Brake force is also shown in the space build helper for your brake force in space. Max speed is wrong. I'm not actually sure what it's used for. I'm sure for something, but not anything I know how. But um, low altitude lift is going to be provided by your vertical boosters, things like that. And then also, if you put your atmospheric engine facing down, you could create a VTOL aircraft vertical takeoff and landing, and you would get the statistics here in the low altitude lift. High altitude lift is your wings and then also you have a sustenation speed, which is the speed that you have to go or else your ship will stall. A higher sustenation speed equals a more re ready stall angle, or like your ship's going to stall more easily and won't be able to carry quite as much weight. A low stall speed is going to be a, a kind of a weightlifting ship, you know. Cross sections, also a very important tab here at the bottom of the list. The vertical cross section, as you can see on my ship, is massive because it's a big triangle. Frontal crest section you want to probably be your load lowest. Unfortunately, mine is, is not due to the stabilizers. But keep that in mind when you're building your ship that you should have a reasonable front cross section. Sleek ships are more efficient. 
Now there's also a few other helpful things in here, and if you're a mathematician, you can look at that, but eh, that scares me, so we'll just look here, and we can see the different factors on the, on the yawn roll and stuff like that. There's also elements report and things like that. I'll let you go through those on your own. Now I've probably missed a few things about how flight into a universe works, so when I find those things out, I'll be making a list in the description of this video. Also, if you have any tips or tricks that I missed, I'm sure there are many, like I said. Post them in the description and they'll be added to, or post them in the comments section and they will be added to the description of the video. Now if you found this video helpful, please hit the subscribe button and like, it helps me out a bunch and makes me more motivated to make the videos. Also, if you're interested in checking out Dual Universe, there is a link in the description that will take you straight to their homepage. Anyway, thank you for watching.